What's up, my Power Addicts crew? Look at this. I'm all dirty. But something else is not. Woo-wee! But look at that throttle body. It's all clean. Let me show you how it's done. To make life easy on yourself, get this out of the way. Mine, most of the time, you get a hold of the top of it, it'll kind of wiggle. It'll come off the top of the throttle body. Yeah. You can see the top of my throttle body right there. It's got a lot of oil residue built up on it. Then down inside the butterfly. Yeah, she needs cleaned. It's going to be interesting to see what the uh, idle air control here, the IAC as some people call it, what that um, plunger looks like inside there. So to begin with, get your throttle cable off here. Most of the time you can kind of pull and wiggle. It'll pop off there. This is the cable for my hand throttle. Which is right there. So what this does is when I pull up on the lever here, it opens the throttle blades on the throttle body. That creates a high idle situation to where I've got my onboard air compressor if I want to run it and I need that extra charge of air from the higher RPMs, I'll kick the throttle up, which puts out more air. Yes. So, let me go release that. And then when I'm done with it, I just push it down. But now I gotta pull my little pin right here off. Yeah. So I got, for me, I gotta pull that little pin off right there and move that washer and slide that cable off. So I'm not gonna fool with the camera while I'm doing it because I'll probably drop that pin to the deep abyss and never be seen again. So look at me being impatient. Let me go grab a pair of pliers before I do something dumb. Much smarter. And take the washer off. Sit this over here before I drop it. Sit my pin down. Now take my cable. Push the throttle back a little bit and move the cable off like that. That's loose. Now, now the idle air control, little tab right here, push it back. Rock the harness back and it'll pop off. And yeah, well, I just knocked that hose off. It'll be all right. Now this is your throttle position sensor. My little clip right here is broke. So normally you would pick this up here while you pull back on the harness. But since mine's broke, I just wiggle it backwards and it's off. Now, let me go get the needed tools to take out the bolts. And that needed tool will be a 10 millimeter socket. Now, as you break the bolts loose, go around it. Don't put a lot of pressure, just enough to break it loose. Once you get a broke loose, you can take them out by hand. Now, as you pick your bolt up, you'll notice how I've got my finger positioned. See, just hold the bolt like that, pick it up. It keeps from dropping it down and it hitting the ground. Then you have to fish for it. Yeah, all that fun stuff. Ta-da! But once you get the bolts out, sometimes the throttle body will come loose like this one right here has, and sometimes it won't. But whenever you go to move it, gently apply the pressure onto it because you've got a gasket on the bottom side of it. Right there. Now here's your throttle body gasket. If you can, peel it off there so therefore you can clean all around through here and get you know, as clean as you possibly can. But try your best not to tear it up. If you do, you want to make a parts run. So as you can see, we're going to need some torx bits, but not just any torx bits. We're also going to need the security style torx bits, in which I have here, which I got from Harbor Freight. And I'll throw a link up in here down, down in the description, details and stuff. Uh, I'll try to find a kit similar to this, link it up where you guys just order if you want to, in case you don't have a Harbor Freight near you. Now whenever I put those Amazon links in the, the show notes descriptions below and stuff, those are affiliate links. Affiliate links pays me a little small commission fee whenever you guys purchase any said product. For instance, this bit. You guys buy that bit set, I'll get a tiny little commission fee off of it at no extra cost to you. I use that uh, commission money that I make from Amazon to turn around and buy these tools that helps make these videos. So 
by you guys purchasing little knickknacks like this or parts or whatever, you're also helping me help you to make these videos. Sweet. And I really appreciate it. The size bit you're going to need is a T20, but you're going to need that little hole in the middle. That's why it's called the security bits. Because, for instance, see that little uh, nub sticking up right there? That little center post inside that torque bit goes up inside that right there to allow you to get it out. If you're using one of these drivers here that has the uh, Phillips and flap on one of these, you may have to use that because that recess is pretty far. Then this will fit in the end of that. Now one thing about taking these throttle position sensors out, you gotta be careful because they do use a um, kind of like a Loctite lock, locking compound up inside those bolts. So don't get crazy. If it doesn't want to move, just kind of bump it little by little until it breaks loose. I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. See this stuff on the end of the threads? Yeah, it's kind of like a locking compound. So we got the throttle position sensor off, and you see we got little teeth right here. We got a tooth there and a tooth there. This little flathead blade looks like a flathead screwdriver. As you move your throttle, see how that rotates and turns? It grabs those little teeth right there and rotates those little teeth inside here. That's what tells your engine what position your throttle's in. And therefore, it sets the parameters inside the computer to give it more fuel and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, so. Now we're gonna take the idle air control off. And again, if you look real close, see that orange? Yep, thread locker. Now once you get those screws out, hold down your throttle body, it kind of may have to get a little bit rowdy with it there it goes because sometimes it sticks right there pretty good and you've got an o-ring right there that seals all this together so look at all that crud right there that's part of the reason why you want to clean your throttle body periodically my engine in this jeep has a number six cylinder has a lot of blow by i mean it's like it's bad compression on number six so what's blow by Blow by is when your piston rings on your pistons inside the cylinder walls are so worn out that whenever the piston comes up to compression stroke, it blows the compression actually leaks past the rings, which goes down inside the crankcase where your oil and everything else is. It builds up pressure inside the crankcase. And when it does that, all that pressure inside the crankcase comes out the PVC hose and goes right into the breather. So when it goes out the breather, it can blow it up the intake as well and makes a mess like this. So one day there'll be an engine build video. When? I don't know. So now we're going to take this part off right here. And again, this is where you need that security bit. See that hole? So I go back inside that recess on those screws here. And again, don't force it. I mean, you, it'll start turning, but it feels like... You know, that's... One thing about turning bolts and screws and stuff like that and trying to do, do videos, and I tell you, it feels like this, feels like that, you know. It's one of those things you just cannot convey over a camera. I've been doing this stuff since before I was old enough to drive, so it's kind of like I've developed that touch. Like right there, it's like hard, 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 but gentle easy pressure as you turn it because even these bolts right here has that thread locker on it as you can see right there thread locker and here we go see right there at grime that's what's going to cause your idling issues so I'm going to take some old-fashioned carburetor cleaner and get all that junk cleaned out right there. Then we'll talk about how everything works. Make you a little pull and get you one of those straws that comes on brake cleaner. Again, a scrub around that crease right there. And right here where the blade meets the body, the shaft, that helps a lot. 
So when you go to clean this housing, you got a rubber seal right here. Make sure you don't break it. So as soon as I started making videos, a lot more started up. So I went and cleaned up the throttle body. And what I did, I used some good old gunk engine degreaser. I'll spray it on, saturate it in real good. Take an old toothbrush. Every time I buy a new toothbrush, I keep my old ones for stuff like this. One around scrap, you know, scrubbing all the cracks and crevices. Got it all cleaned up so much better. But in the meantime, I did break my gasket for the IAC. It goes in kind of like that right there. Now this gasket right here is a little bit more harder to find, but I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. When I put it back together, that is. So I started cleaning this up, I discovered all that crap right there. And you can see a definite line to right here where I was taking the toothbrush, cramming it inside there, cleaning that. Then you see this line right here? That's the buildup that the IAC or idle air control has to deal with. Especially if you got an engine that has a lot of blow by, it starts to build up all that crud right there, and that's what causes your idling issue. And down inside here is where the plunger for the idle air control hits that hole right there. The idle air control moves its plunger back and forth, creating a vacuum leak. Well, if you've got a lot of buildup on this right here, then you will have a continuous vacuum leak, which will alter the idle settings of your Jeep or whatever vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's a Jeep or whatever. The idle air control serves the same function no matter what the vehicle is. So I've got some jump buildup around through here, there, and i got to scrub all that crap out of there. And back in here, right around in that right there. So yeah, i got to finish scrubbing that out. And here we have the idle air control. Notice all the jump build up. You can see this ring around the plunger here that it was at least still sealing up to that point. But right there, not so much. Right there was gonna hold it off just enough that it was gonna create a vacuum leak. So scratch that off right there. Then we got all the crud built up inside here. So yeah, I'm gonna take my toothbrush. Well, first I'm gonna take this stick and knock all the major junk out of there and clean this thing up. Be back in a bit. Ta-da! Look how pretty that is. Yeah, buddy. Again, using the engine degreaser first. Went around it, scrubbed it with a toothbrush, scrubbed all the major grime off of it. Anything that wasn't coming off good, used me a little bit right here to kind of scratch and flake the... Like right there's a little bit left. Roll that right off there. Most of it, I think my friend was bringing it off. So it's not very hard to clean them up. It's just one of those things, if you've got an old vehicle, it's good every so often to pull it apart and clean everything up to prevent any runability issues. Now as your ISC goes up inside here, you can see the plunger where it meets up with that hole right there. And the ECM, the chief's computer, tells that plunger to pull back and forth to create a vacuum leak or close off a vacuum leak, depending on whether the Jeep's warmed up or, or cold or whatever the case may be. When it's cold, it pulls that back and creates that vacuum leak through the throttle body. Then once it warms up, the, the plunger goes back forward and, and seals off that hole, stopping the vacuum leak. So basically, it's just a regulated vacuum leak. Now, how do you know you got throttle body issues? One, you can be stepping on the throttle if you stumble as you're driving. More times than not, that's going to be a throttle position sensor because the throttle position sensor is kind of like a it's a potentiometer, a variable resistor, you if you will. Um, those of you who have in your house the little dimmer knob for your light, you turn the light you know, brighter, dimmer by turning the knob or slider, whatever the case may be. The throttle position sensor is very similar to that. You got a five volt uh, feed going into it, and as that throttle position sensor turns, it takes it five volts and turn it up, turn it down, whatever, sends that signal to the ECM that, hey, I'm at 2.5 volts right now, which means you're about to have throttle. So if that throttle position sensor has a bad spot in it, as it goes through the sweep and it hits a spot to where it's bad, you may get a, a flat stumble or it doesn't change the um, RPMs any, or weird things can happen. I have a video showing how to test a throttle position sensor. I'll link it up up here somewhere and down, down in the uh, descriptions where you guys go check that out. But what about the IAC or idle air control? Well, that plunger, as I showed you, that pulls back and forth. If the idle air control itself is bad and that plunger isn't being pulled back to create that vacuum leak, in the mornings when you warm up and it's really cold outside, you won't get that RPM to rev up. Now, if you're idling at 600 RPMs and the IAC bumps it up to like 800 rpms or something like that and it doesn't do that well then you could potentially have a bad idle air control motor 
Well, on the flip side of that, if you're always running at a high idle, meaning you run 800, 1000, 1100 RPM, something like that, that plunger could be pulled back and creating that vacuum leak and not going back in like it should to seal off a vacuum leak. So it's whenever you've got a vacuum leak inside the throttle body area like that or under the throttle body gasket, like for instance, if you tear up the gasket, you're going to create a vacuum leak below the throttle blades that will create a high idle situation. So with that idle air control, if it's pulled back and it won't close up, you're going to high idle all the time, no matter if you're you know, going down the road or you're sitting in your driveway, whatever, it doesn't matter. So that could be another uh, bug crawling on me. That could be another thing about how it either needs to be cleaned because of all that gunk buildup, it's not allowing it to come forward enough to seal off or the idle control motor itself is bad. Or sometimes if you give it throttle and it's real slow to drop your RPMs down, that could be idle air control uh, motor that's not allowing the plunger to come back in fast enough. Or you could have some debris or some gunk built up around your throttle blades that's creating a vacuum leak. Like you've seen uh, when I first pulled the throttle body off, it had, had all that junk around the blades and stuff. That gunk buildup will prevent the blades from closing off inside the throttle body, creating a vacuum leak around the throttle uh, body blade, sucking in excess air, therefore creating a high idle situation. Now, if you've got a lot of oil buildup like mine did, and I'm really, really surprised I wouldn't have drivability issues because how bad it was. But when that throttle blade was coming in close, and if it's got enough of that gunk built up, that gunk was compressed slowly. So your throttle blade's sitting here, but it's got a lot of gunk on it. As it sits against the throttle body, all that excess oil and grease has to compress real slowly to seal off against the throttle body. In a situation like that, it can be high revving, but as it slowly drops down, there's no idle RPM. So, long story short, every so often, look inside that throttle body, see if it's all gummed up. If it is, take it off and clean it. It saves you a lot of headache. I'm really surprised mine wouldn't give me issues. It was nasty. When cleaning up your O-ring, just take your you know, shop towel like this right here, put it between the layers, and gently just pull like that right there. It'll take all that junk off. Pretty easy, actually. Now it's time to put it back together, but I showed you guys a moment ago that that one gasket for the idle air control joining the body, that it broke. I'm about to do something that's gonna cause some of you to lose your mind. And I don't care. Meaning, proper procedures is to go buy a new gasket. But guess what? That gasket isn't exactly as easy to find. So, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because that could potentially create a small vacuum leak. But odds are it won't. But here's something you can do. Lay that there. Take a little bit of RTV. I mean, a tiny little bit. See that little tiny spot on my pinky? That's what I'm saying, just a tiny little bit. Take your gasket, and just take right against it this way. And what you're doing, you're packing that RTV right into the edge of where that gasket sits at. Give it another little bit. And the reason I said some of you are going to lose your mind is that some people get this whole thing about, oh my gosh, you're putting our TV by the throttle. It can be sucked into the engine. It's going to be the end of the world. No, it won't. Relax. Right there and right along in there. And need just a smidge a little more. And here's going to be another thing too. Somebody, you using the wrong color RTV. Whatever. If you don't want to do it this way, don't. Go buy your new gasket. But one, I don't feel like going to get one. And I just don't think these things are total parts that fluently. Or that. There we go. Close enough for hand grenades. Then we'll take your gasket and come in like this. Lay it like this. And bring your gasket straight into it as like that because if your gas is torn like any kind of angles whatever laying it flat and moving into it like that you're going to seal up any of those gaps and if you got any excess and it makes you feel all warm and fuzzy you can wipe it off like that now we're going to take the idle air control body Notice your little Z right here. Notice the Z right there. You know which way it goes on now. Like that. And take one of your little bolts. 
it's hard to do this or watch the camera viewfinder both. Get one of them running by hand a little bit. That kind of gets you pretty well lined up. Get your second one put in. And once you've got two of them lined up, you can pretty much run from there. Because now this is going to hold itself in position and go ahead and put your other two in. Once you get all your screws run in, just give it a good hard snug. You don't need them crazy tight. Because what you don't want to do is twist that screw off into the throttle body and then you will create your own kind of leaks. That's a bigger headache. And getting that little screw out of the throttle body, <laughs> no. I've got three or four more throttle bodies around here. I would I would crash this one and use one of them. So yeah, I'm like that. I ain't got time for the headache, and not to mention there's probably another hundred in the junkyard around here. So there we go. Yes. So I had to wait for the loud airplane to go above. So go to put your O-ring back in. Most people think it'll slide on here, then slide up in there, and you're good to go. Can you do it that way? Yes, you can. But it's actually the hard way of doing things. Take your O-ring and put it beside here first. Now, why would I want to do that? Notice right there, so if I can catch that, there's a slight bit of a taper on the edge of this. If you take put your O-ring up in here first, that slight little taper on the idle air control motor will actually help you get past this o-ring otherwise you put the o-ring on the idle air control motor first it has to compress against that sharp edge so with your plug facing away from the throttle body go up inside here and gently rock it there it goes sorry we're good now put your screws in and just like this just a good tight snug now as you put your screws back in notice i've got this one buddied up against it but this one's not yet when this one touches come over here to this one uh, hold the screwdriver run it in but pull your IC as close as you can to the throttle body pushing it in because what you don't want to do is have your IC having a big gap right here and start tightening this up and crack the ears on the IC because it's just plastic people so don't get all over zillions here you come over here give it a bump Come back over here, give it a little bump, and once you finally seat the IEC, just give it a good solid snug and you're good to go. And that is installed. Mm hmm. Somebody's out there pretty smart. You're going to ask, what about all that thread locker that's on the threads? Well, here's what I did I didn't do anything with it. I actually left it on the screw threads, just left it alone. Because what I'm not going to do is go get some more thread locker, put it on those screws. And run it back in in the event that later on down the road I have a problem, then I gotta fight thread locker getting it off, especially if I'm broke down the side of the road on the trail or something like that. So if you leave that thread locker on there, that provides just enough grip for those screws not to back out. In all the years I've worked on cars, I have yet to ever see one of those things back out. I ain't saying it can't happen, but I ain't ever seen it. Now for the throttle position sensor. Take the throttle position sensor, kind of clock it this way a little bit. Because remember, we've got this flat blade right here to deal with, and we've got those little teeth. So when you take it up here like this, you get up next to that little flat blade, they'll slide in perfectly. Then you'll rotate this around and line up your screw holes. Now, putting this in, first thing I think is all those 5 -0 guys out there, the 5 -0 Mustangs of the old uh, Fox bodies. You can tweak the throttle position sensor on those and alter your voltage for wide open throttle positions and stuff like that. Can you do that with the Jeep? Not that I know of and I'm not going to anyway because really it ain't going to make that much difference. Come on people, the 4.0, the 2.5 ain't nothing but glorified tractor engines. Just a good snug. And you're good. Look at all that oil down inside the intake. Number six cylinder shot. Yeah, let's blow by. If you're actually going to reuse the throttle body gasket like I'm going to, look right there. See that little half circle? Look on your throttle body. Right there and right there. Make sure you do line those up. That will help ensure you don't create any vacuum leaks. Yes, I know you can just go buy a new gasket, but I'm not going to. I mean, they're cheap, but... 
Now as you can see right there, I've got one of the screws in place that will help you align that gasket as you set it down. Uh, I'm too short, I need my step. Before you tighten that one down, get you another screw started. That will help ensure that your gasket is properly aligned and you don't booger it up. Now as you put your throttle body bolts in, by hand, run them down until they touch the throttle body. Right there, that one's just touching, all the other three's just touching. Because what you don't want to do is say for instance, we'll get this and it's touching and now we get the ratchet and crank it down tight. What you've done is put all the pressure on that one ear of the throttle body while the other three ears are still relaxed because they're not tightened down. By putting all that pressure on that one, you're subject to crack it. And I've seen people do that on carburetors many times. So you get them to the point where they're just touching, then take your ratchet and give it a good hard snug. You don't have to make your throttle body super tight. Well, number six cylinder not have the compression that it should have it's just really making it not be as powerful as it could be it's not creating any kind of runnability issues i mean it still runs smooth it idles smooth all that stuff it just uses oil i put oil in every so often and if it had all cylinders working on good compression of course it would have more power but i got four more complete 4.0s I got one in my carport, one on the engine stand in the back of my shop. I got one in the Cherokee that I'm not going to be using because I'm converting it into the camper rig. And the one in rust bucket. Of course, the one in rust bucket stays in rust bucket until I get ready to do the V8 swap. So, I got engines to build and that'll come up someday soon. If somebody's going to ask, hey, you want to sell me a 4.0? No, I don't want to sell one. I've got it all tightened down now. I've got my throttle linkage on. I've got my hand throttles on. And I go to hook up wiring and discovered I done messed up my layer control. I put it on wrong. I gotta turn it around because look at the directional plug. See how it's cutting a 90 like that? And I can't plug it in here because it's against my fuel rail. I gotta take it back off and turn it. Dang it. So whenever you guys put yours back together, make sure you put that the right direction. So I reckon I could turn my mistake into a lesson for you guys. If you actually got to change the idle air control motor, you don't have to pull the throttle body to do it. Set you up with a tool like this, or if you've got, you know, a set of a nut driver bits, this torch security bit on the end of it, you can simply take this, and I've got my ratchet with a quarter inch socket on it. Take out that screw, come in from the bottom down here, take out that screw there. And if you're going to change it, you'll pull it out. You know, you wiggle it and pull it out this way. But since I'm just going to turn it around, see if I can get away with that. Of course not. That would be too dang simple. Oh, come on, girl. Yep, I brought the sealant with it. So now, i got to put that O-ring back in place. And I'm doing all this with one hand because I couldn't get the tripod and me and everything else up in here. Put that O-ring back in place and turn this the right way. Then turn this the correct way. Go up in here and don't hit that seal too hard. Now we're against the seal. Give it a little wiggle. There it goes. There she goes, seated. Put this one in. And this one is like a bunch of fun. You gotta come in from back here and from the bottom. And normally I would be taking my right hand, supporting myself on the engine to lean over into this, but my right hand's holding the camera at the moment. Or also, if you've got a magnetic set of torques, you can bring it in from this, like this too. Different ways of doing it. I'm just using what I got at the moment, plus I'm having to give you guys the proper view. So, now that I've got the screw started, I'm going to take my bit and tighten this back up again. Look at that. Things fit so much better when you put it together the right way. Sometimes I'm just a genius. Not. And for those of you who had... I'm dirty. 
And for those of you who just have to hear it start up and run, let's do that. Uh, kick it out of gear so I don't run over nothing. Let's cut my wheels. Ignition. Contact and ready. Yeah, boy, she runs good. It's getting dark, and I was out here cleaning up, and I almost forgot to show you guys what I was using. Using that engine degreaser with a old toothbrush to get the major grime off. Then sometimes I used a little brake clean, but mostly I was using regular carbon choke cleaner. And what you guys didn't see on camera is the fact that I had on safety glasses. This stuff gets in your eyes. Ooh, not good, not good. It hoits. Safety glasses, people, always when using these chemicals or, or a lot of things in life, use safety glasses. Protect those peepers. Subway Power Ass Crew, hope you guys learned a little something from that. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. There's cool comments down below. Peace. Later, y'all.